Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday. Finally made it to the weekend here, October 11th, 2024. It's about 10.55 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 2.8 across the Mediterranean, also a 3.1 here in the red flag around the Puerto Rico area, it looks like, where we're having a little bit of uptick here. Nothing big, just some twos and threes stirring up out there in the last 24 hours. So what do we got here for earthquake activity? Uh, starting off into the Pacific Northwest, minimal smaller quakes out there across the Seattle area. Really nothing major to report uh, in this area today. Down across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, low 1.9. Also some movement here underneath Northern California with a 1.7 from late last night. Looks like a little earthquake off on the Makama Fault as well. there on the coast range of Northern California. The Bay Area fairly quiet as we look at Southern California here. Uh, generally small microquake activity out here. Nothing big, no major swarms going on. Uh, some movement outside of uh, the Death Valley area this morning. It looks like a 3.4 stirring up here off of the, uh, looks like the Town Pass Fault towards the end of it. Uh, this area uh, has seen a little bit of increase here recently see what we got. I know we had another three-pointer out there, 3.6, a little bit further south here a few days ago. But uh, regionally, it looks like things just starting to kick up here across this mountain range area uh, with various fault systems being affected. Uh, but for now, no major movement there across Southern California. I don't think we had anything down here across the area. Well, there's a, there was a three-pointer, it looks like, this morning near the Loma Linda area off of the uh, San Jacinto Fault Zone, about 4 o'clock a.m. when most people were sleeping, I'm sure. But uh, really no major unusual activity to note there across California for now. Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up there on the map. Uh, but let's just double check that here. We'll get to space weather activity here in just a little bit. Uh, Yellowstone overview here of the seismograph stations. There's the caldera. Super volcano out there in the black line. Nothing showing up here in terms of earthquake activity. So fairly quiet, it looks like, for now. And uh, some small amount of uh, microquakes here across the rest of the country. Really nothing of any noteworthy value. A 2.2 on the New Madrid seismic zone. But aside from that, things looking uh, fairly quiet out here in terms of earthquake activity. After a significant solar storm last night, one would expect... Major earthquake uptick and large, intense earthquakes. Well, <laughs> that is not the case here following uh, that uh, large solar storm here last night. So let's see what else we got here across the globe. In fact, the largest earthquake out here so far today is only going to be a 4.9 around Papua New Guinea area. And that can happen on any given day regardless of any space weather activity. So I'm, you know, I'm leaning more towards that... Uh, the solar storms and whatnot do not trigger earthquakes. Now, whether it has a long-term effect on them or not, you know, who knows? But in terms of significant impacts to earthquake, uh, in terms of the elevated space weather activity and the planet getting bombarded, whether it's from a large solar flare, protons, or a large CME that hit us last night, you know, it's, I don't see any elevated earthquake activity at all nothing zip zero 4.9 wow that's you know that can happen on any given day no major uptick in earthquake activity uh all of this here is from mainly from yesterday around the tonga area some deeper quakes nothing major going on out there across the new zealand area for now just looks like some older movement looks like uh, also a little three-pointer in there fairly recent but i mean look at the globe there's really not a lot going on here let me fix that back up uh, in terms of larger scale activity, Middle America Trench here seeing some typical movement, but that's, uh, you know, you can see that on any given day. Looks like there was a 4.7 out here. Uh, just off the coast of Honduras, I believe we had another one out here. Yeah, recently, a couple days ago, actually, yeah, just about a week or so ago. 4.1 a little bit further west here along the plate boundary. Now we've got a 4.7 over here. So a little bit of adjustment taking place here around the Caribbean plate. Nothing major. 
nothing major at all here, folks. You know, just kind of a, a typical day. A lot of people um, assume that, uh, you know, these fours and fives that we see out here might be something new, but it's that's not the case here. We see magnitude fives uh, any given day out here. 4.5 out in the Kuril Kamchatka, just off the coast of Russia up here. Fairly recent earthquake uh, from this morning. 19 miles deep here into the northern edge of the subduction zone. Alaska region has been about the only elevated area here recently uh, in terms of uptick in earthquake activity. And even today, it looks like things may be tapering off slightly. Uh, there's a little swarm up here around the Brooks Range. Uh, with a trail of activity leading off towards the Aleutian Trench here. But it looks like things are starting to mellow out there a little bit. A 3.4 earthquake this morning is away from the swarming area, which is situated right about here. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's typical day. All right, let's check out space weather activity, right? Um, we had a significant solar flare or solar storm event last night with g4 stormy conditions being observed i seen one model there from the uh, german agency that showed it above a nine uh kp index of nine which would be a g5 storm so it looks like officially we didn't make the g5 category but goodness we've seen the auroras down here in the northern california again and went out there with missy mimi's after dark and got to see some beautiful red colored auroras and a little bit of green further up north as well so it's pretty neat also got a lot of emails here from folks sending me aurora pictures uh, overnight so it's going to take me a little bit to put together a little a little video of all the viewer sent in images but we'll be working on that and i'll provide that here soon uh, but i appreciate definitely appreciate uh, the images coming in there and the emails uh, it sounds like a lot of folks got to see it last night so that has since calmed down here. Uh, although looking at the KP index here, looks like things still remain elevated in terms of that uh, level. But I'm guessing that's got to do with the solar wind stream here being suppressed here with the BZ component uh, pretty much blocking out any type of aurora amplification here last night we had a bz component way tip south that allowed for the amplification that we've seen last night uh, with auroras down in northern california and uh, some other lower areas as well even florida seen some auroras not i don't think with the naked eye but uh, with your cell phone there if you uh, kind of put it on a three second exposure uh, it can pop up some colors that may not be visual there for uh, with your own eyes but uh, there's the BZ component. That was wide south here, way open. And since then, things have uh, closed up, so to speak, here with a uh, fairly solid neutral component here of that BZ um, data coming in. So it doesn't look like we're going to see any other amplification unless we get that changing. But it looks pretty tight there in terms of the BZ component even with uh, looks like maybe a little bit of elevated KP index coming in. So for the forecast tonight, uh, nothing like what we've seen last night here. Uh, but I don't even think we'll see this as long as that BZ component there is uh, neutral or pointed north. But uh, goodness, last night, you know, second time in my life, I got to see the auroras here in Northern California. Fairly impressive. I don't think they were as spectacular as what we've seen back in May, but nonetheless, it was still a nice little October treat. Flaring level, yeah, it looks like we're coming back down from an M flare here just in the last hour or so. Uh, let's see where this is at. Are we working? There we go. Uh, looks like it was coming off of this sunspot here, with it, which is uh, currently just about ready to face Earth squarely lined up. Uh, we do have a number of sun sunspots out here. That uh, it does seem a little slow here. What's going on? It's mainly the solar ham site, looks like. Now 
Not me. Looks like we're doing good. In terms of KBs, they're running solid. Could be the Space Weather Prediction Center. Because he's got links here that run to that website to click on this, and it's just not working. What's going on here? Hello? Interesting. Okay, well, uh, this is a little bit older image here, so we don't know exactly what these look like today. Oh, well, there we go. Spoke that into existence there. Uh, here's this area that's currently flaring with some M flare movement, M flare activity. Looks like we're getting a little bit of popcorn colors here popping up, indicating some complexity within the sunspot core. So watch that. Here's the sunspot that produced the uh, X flare, Earth directed X flare, as well as the um, CME activity from last night. This is the source there that produced that uh, large CME. And uh, it's further out and about here across the western quadrant of the sun. Still looking somewhat complex, but I'm more focused on this area. Getting a lot of different colors popping up all of a sudden there in that sunspot area. So the overall flare threat right now, 25% chance for X flare. M flare at 70, C flare around 99% chance or so. And the auroras... You know, there might be a little unsettled conditions if we get that BZ component there tipped south, but it looks pretty solid here on the solar wind stream. Um, doesn't look like it's moving anywhere. So probably not going to see a whole lot of roars here this evening. Uh, Storm Prediction Center in terms of severe weather, not a whole lot going on here over the next couple days. Uh, just a little thunderstorm activity up there around the uh, Great Lakes area, but that's about it. Uh, tropical systems here. This is uh, the state's GFS model run. I like to look at this and see what the forecast models are picking up in terms of any, you know, major storm systems, tropical systems. Notice down here across the uh, Gulf of Mexico, uh, a couple models back here were showing uh, some type of tropical system developing in the Gulf and then heading to Florida. But that has since dwindled out, uh, which is good news. But, you know, got to take these models here weeks at a time way out in advance uh, with a grain of salt so to speak here because they really are not all that accurate but it does give a little hint uh, maybe of a pattern change here towards the end of October out along the west coast a lot of colder air venturing down here across this area and I will be happy to take that I need the storm door to come open out here across California I'm tired of the heat I'm done with summer. I welcome winter with open arms. Let me tell you, I'm a cold weather guy, right? Think about it. If it's if it's so hot outside, you know, you have to pretty much stay inside and run the AC 24-7 just to be comfortable. Or if you got a nice pool outside, it's a little bit different story, but still, you're out in the hot sun. When it's cold out, you can at least put a jacket on. You know, you can start running or jogging, exercising. If you're too cold, that'll warm you up outside. You know, it's, I don't know, colder weather sounds more inviting to me than 105 degrees every day out here. And it's, it's getting old, but uh, we're done with summer for now. Looks like maybe some severe weather threats here. It looks like I was looking at this pattern out here for the southern plains, maybe Oklahoma, Texas. These low pressure troughs that form out here for the fall season can produce severe weather threats. So that may be a possibility. At least one of those storms there showing, oh, it looks like a severe weather threat for tornado activity, I'm sure, as we head towards the, um, a little bit deeper into October. As far as Halloween goes, we don't know. That's way far out there. We'll have to check back at a little bit later date. But uh, anyway, folks, um, again, appreciate all the emails coming in. I do have quite a bunch to put together here, but um, it might take me a little bit. But I want to uh, make a little compilation video here and uh, share the uh, pictures that you guys sent in. Pretty neat. A lot of, uh, a lot of folks looking up at the sky last night, you know getting outside in general is just good for good for your soul right to glance up at the sky and the stars and the moon and the aurora activity you know it's it's pretty neat definitely a um, a nice experience one little earthquake here on the garlock fault shear zone little 1.4 again nothing major going on here today folks 
nothing major. I was, uh, I have a couple solar weather apps on my phone. Can't remember the name of this one, but during the solar storm last night, they uh, were calling for satellites to go down, elevators to stop working, uh, electrical power grids to go down, major earthquake activity to happen here, um, and none of that came true. You know, it's uh, it would take more than a G4 class storm to affect complete power grids out here. Uh, it would take a significant event, and I don't know. I, I think those little apps here on your phone that you can get from the app store, it tracks space weather, but also at the same time, they throw in a little bit of fear mongering tactics, you know, expect major power grids. The internet will go down and it's like, what are you talking about? It's space weather storms, right? They happen. And, uh, even the one back in May didn't create any type of major catastrophic electrical damage, you know, anywhere. So, and no major earthquake activity from this event or the one back in May. So, you know, it's just, I've been trying to keep a track of all of the events that we've been having here, whether it's a strong earth directed flare, strong proton event, uh, a major solar storm with a, you know, CME impact that we had last night. And I kind of keep track of it and then compare the two. Uh, relationships between space weather and earthquake activity and this is just another dud if you want to try and theorize uh, the relationship between the two again whether it's long term you know who knows but um, that diminishes the the theory if they're if the, if the two are related to one another you know six months down the road yeah this was this was the result of the solar storm back in you know six months ago no, it's not. <laughs> earthquakes can happen on any given day. We get large earthquakes when there's no solar storms. We get large earthquakes when there's uh, when there are solar storms. But the last two events here, these last two major events, nothing. I I look at these 24/7, and there's nothing of out out of the norm here in terms of earthquake activity. Anyway, folks, it, all we can do is just keep track of it and. Uh, See what the next one provides, you know. Try to root out um, the possibility of the two or, or relate the two. And it takes uh, trends, right? It takes a, that trend to follow and see if the two are indeed related. But this one's a little, you can X marks the, uh, the negative here. Nothing going on. All right, I'm out of here, folks. Have yourself a good day. It is Friday, right? Made it to the weekend, so that's definitely some good news here. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening for the Friday night update. And uh, if you didn't get a chance to send in your pictures here, and if you feel like sharing them for the uh, viewers out here of the world, I will gladly include them in my compilation video here that I'll be putting together. I'll be working on it a little bit through, through the uh, day today. And uh, just let me know your location, uh, your name, if you feel like sharing. But, uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys back out here uh, a little bit later. Earthmastermail at gmail.com is my email if you want to send those to me, by the way. Uh, other than that, have a good day, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here later tonight. Stay safe. Double check. Make sure the earthquake 3D bells are on. Ooh, hold on a second.